As we we are uh, actually viewing live, streaming live, and um, we also have our television programs. And I'd like to take a second to to mention those those of you that are viewing us live on the web this Sunday morning. We want to thank you for tuning in to this morning's service, and also those that are on our local television stations in the Goldsboro area, which is uh, WHFL Channel 43, and also Time Warner Cable 21. We thank thank you for tuning into those programs as well, and we want to take the opportunity to extend a warm welcome. If you're out there in this world and you're and you're searching and you don't know exactly what you're searching for, but you you know you need something. Um, Highest Praise Tabernacle Church, we believe in the Bible. Every aspect of what the Bible is, we stand on that. And if you're looking for a church that believes in teaching and preaching and living the Bible, Highest Praise Tabernacle would love for you to come join us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, we're kind of going into the fall of the year. And this entitlement of this message is, is fall faith. Um, this is a very simple message because as we... Um, Go into this message. Fall is kind of um, is like a scenic season because there's so many things that takes place. September brings, which is already passed, brings us nostalgia, as so, so many people put it, because people got school days and and there's memories going on. In October, we have um, how that the world is just transformed through the fall. It's just like how the master has just painted a beautiful picture in the fall. I know if you go to the mountains or, or if you see the trees changing in the trees, it's just a beautiful blaze of beautiful color, the lakes, and it's just all of God's creation. It's, it's just so much taking place in the fall. It's just, I, I love the fall because it just, things even smell better. It's like the, the, the fish decide they want to start jumping and, and biting and and hunters, they always in the fall, because raised in that area, they're always looking for their favorite place in the fall to go ahead and set up so they can go be alone with the Lord in nature. And, and, you know, you take your birds, they start migrating from place to place, from north, and your snowbirds, and so many things take place in the fall that it's just a beautiful time of the year. Amen? I love fall. I love it because you, hopefully you get a break from the heat wave. But now... Let's, let's move on. We got November is actually part of, turns our thoughts to thankfulness. When we go into November, through the fall of the year, we start being thankful, Thanksgiving. So I want to ask you this question when we talk about fall faith, because the Bible speaks of what does fall have to do with faith? You're probably wondering, what does it have to do with faith? Well, the Bible tells us in John chapter 4, Verses 34 38. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 34. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now, before we go to another, all right, Jesus said, and he said, Jesus said this, is his meat is to do the will of him who sent him. Who sent him? God. And listen, but he sent him something else most people don't grasp. And to finish his work. Jesus was set here to finish what God started. Can you say it's finished? It's finished. And, and, and what do we mean by that? Well, let's look at verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. He's, he's saying this statement, making a question. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes... And look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. They are ready. You don't have to wait. They're ready is what he's saying. And in 36, and he that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And therein is that saying true. One soweth, and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Well, see, the fall is about a harvest. People are getting the crops out of the field, and, and everybody is harvesting their, their wheat and anything else that they, they've planted. Um, so the first thing I want us to look at, how does fall on? Um, do with faith. I want to bring what Jesus said in John 
to our attention. First of all, in verse 35, fall is the season to lift up our eyes. Fall is the season to lift up our eyes. Because in verse 35, he did say that. He says, lift up your eyes. Did not he make that statement? Lift up your eyes. Evidence of the Lord's handiwork is everywhere. If we would just lift up our eyes in the fall, can't you see God's handiwork everywhere? The, the, the beautiful trees, the, the flowers, the, there's so much. You know, when people say, I don't believe in God, you, you've got to be blind. Because everywhere you look is something so beautiful. And that's why in, in fall, if you can't see God's handiwork at work, something is really wrong with you. In fact, it must be difficult to be an atheist during this time of year. But, you know, um, people are trying to always, and I just want to say this and move on when, you know, when you talk about people that are atheists that basically don't believe in God or agnostic, whatever, they, they just don't believe in in God, but it's so funny when you listen to all these studies that people have, how that that we, some people believe that we're the dust from the stars. Some people believe that we just all come together because of one big explosion and we just, this stuff started falling together. I, I love it what one person said, so he told the atheist, so you believe in nothing. So you believe nothing made something. Somebody think about that. If they believe in nothing, nothing made something. Because aren't y'all something? So somebody made you. Guess who made you if you don't believe in God? Nothing. Is that the dumbest thing anybody could ever tell you? So see, when we, when we look at, if we just open our eyes and look around, we can see God's handiwork at hand, right? Fall should remind us that God loves us and he cares for his plan. God didn't just say, well, uh-oh, I believe I changed the color of the trees and I changed the temperature. No, God had it all planned out. We, look, God, if, if the universe just happened to be and started being dust particles and atoms and all this stuff just started coming together, tell me something, how come the seasons always change? How come if, if you've evolved from something, you haven't, you're still not evolving? I mean, last time I went to the zoo, I didn't see little children running around with monkeys. Okay, if we evolved from something, then that, then that just, that's their way of saying it. And someone said it so true. The reason people actually don't want to believe in God's work, they use these terms so they won't have to face the fact that God is real and they got to obey him. That's one of the biggest things I've learned in all the studies I've ever done is realize that the reason people claim these other religions or these other theories is because if they realize that if they give God credit, that means they got to quit doing the mess they're doing. Think about that just a second. They told one guy, I love to watch a lot of programs where they're telling people or talking to folks about their belief. And he says, the real truth behind you believe, he just looked at he said, I know you believe. He says, you just don't want to accept God because then you'll have to obey him. Think about it. So let's, let's, let's keep our eyes on, he says, and when we look up, look up, looking up ought to keep us from looking down. When we got our eyes on Jesus, we, we, can't, we don't have our eyes on this world. It's tough to be a positive Christian when we're what? When we're keeping our eyes in the pits. You know, it's impossible to look into Jesus and keep your eyes on this world. You know, as we look around, fall reminds us of, of everything that God is about. Fall is the season of marvels over God's greatest design. God, who created the trees? Who created the earth? Who created human mankind? But the greatest thing God designed was salvation. One of the greatest designs ever was salvation. Responding to God's plan by faith will change our life. You know, when fall is about change. Everything takes on a change. Whenever we accept Jesus Christ in our life, there's supposed to be a change taking place. And, and that's so important. The first step Jesus said, he said, lift up your eyes. He's talking about the harvest. The fall is where we do the harvest. Look, lift up your eyes. What if a farmer's got a field full of um, 
vegetables or wheat or whatever, or beans, and, and, and he don't keep his eyes on the harvest, what's going to happen? His, his crop's going to die. Jesus is comparing this to the harvest is ripe. They're like, we got four more months. No, you need to look now. The harvest is ready. The Lord was telling him in, this, in these verses about how do we need to look on. Also, fall is the season to look on the fields. He said in verse 35, Jesus said, they are white already to harvest. When, white means they are ripe. Means they're, they're ready. What, what harvest is ready? Let me tell you something. The people are ready for a harvest. Jesus said, get your eyes back on it. Look on these fields. The worst thing I saw, and I saw this documentary on something, that when people became Christians, they become part of a clique that didn't want to reach nobody else. A lot of times churches, when they get saved, the first thing we want to do is, is not look at no more sinners. Come on. I'm a Christian. I belong here. Let me tell you something. Before you belong there, you were them. And we, the field is not in the church. Well, if they come to church, maybe we can reach them. Don't everybody just say amen at one time. I ain't going there no more. There's too many lost people there. Well, that means you have to quit your job. That means you can't go get no gas at a gas station. You can't eat nowhere. You can't go to the bank. You just, well, you're in a world of trouble. See, the harvest is out there for those that are ready to go pick the harvest. There are those that are ready to reap the harvest. See, Jesus says they are white already to harvest. See, there's so much beauty when we think about the harvest. See, there is a blessing in a harvest of souls. Um, I was watching this documentary, um, and I and you know, I believe it's in Kentucky that they've built the ark. Has anybody heard about that? Actually, the exact dimensions of what the Bible declared. I think it's in Williamstown, Kentucky, and um, they built the ark exactly by the measurements, and it's like um, I think it's one and a half. The two football fields long. And they said it was 14 at the top, 14 stories high. And they said it was, it was over 85 some feet wide. And, and what they did was, the, my point in bringing this in this, see, they, they showed this ark and, and, and they showed how that the, the people, um, when they were doing this thing about reaching people that... Um, that were lost, and they, were go they weren't going after just everybody. They were just going to everybody that claimed to be atheist. It was called the atheist. Um, it's something to do with atheists. They were trying to um, reach out to the atheist. And every young person in college that they talked to, are you an atheist? Yes. And they said, why? And you ought to see the looks on their faces. And that's when he told me, he says, no, you're not really an atheist. You know, because he would use logic to reach out to them. But what I loved about what they did. See, even though they come against confrontation in the field of the harvest, they, they decided, you know what, we're going to go out and we're going to share the gospel. Listen, the gospel has already been written. Jesus said, if, if you'll just go share my word, the word won't come back void, Right? So I, I want you to realize as, as we look at this message is that the harvest is out there. You say, yeah, but that person's mean. That person's hateful. The, I, I'm scared of that person. Well, you just named everything Satan's doing to that person. And what you've been given is stronger than what they have. See, if we're afraid to share the gospel, that means we think Satan is more powerful than God. And you are messed up. Because God's word... It's power. God's word will make every demon from hell hit the road. God's word is so powerful. He, he says, in the beginning was the word. And also the word became flesh and dwelt in him. It was Jesus. And look, he says, by all power and authority in the name of Jesus, we have power and authority through his word. And whenever we go to someone that's lost and share the gospel and they accept Jesus. And all these kids started off 
I mean, they were just sarcastic. They were just giving all these crazy answers, just really trying to be hateful and, and just really sticking to it. And there was one lady in, in particular that she just, everything he said, well, do you, she says, I'm still, I'm st she says, I'm still going to be an atheist. And everything he said, I'm still going to be an atheist. And, and, I, and I thought, well, he's got his hands full. But you know what he kept doing? He kept going back to the Word. And, and he, he appealed to, he said, okay, see, God's Word is power. He said, so everything that she said, he come back with another Word and another Word and another. The Word of God, he kept coming back. And I'm telling you the honest truth, you need to watch it. It was, it was part of that art thing that they were showing. That woman, he, when it was finally over, he looked at her. And I could tell, listen, church, every single one that he talked to, there was something, by the time he had finished with the Word, one-on-one, there was a change in their face. As someone told me today, I, they just felt lighter. I'm telling you, I witnessed demons that was in these people leaving, and their faces and their whole demeanor took a whole new look. Why? Because the Bible says, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And in Matthew 4, after Jesus declared what was written, Satan had to leave him alone. And see, whenever we declare the Word of God to lost people, Satan can't stand it. I mean, you done gone to where Satan is, and you throw in the only thing that can get that demon out of them people, and, and all of a sudden their demeanor changes. Remember when he said in Matthew, I mean, and also where he said that, Whenever the man that had them legions of demons in him, it said in the Word that not only was he delivered, but he was in his right frame of mind. And, and he, he was totally healed. See, because why? Because of the written Word of God. Church, we got a lot of people out there that need Jesus. But if you're waiting for them to come to you, I just want to hear Jesus. I heard you got saved and I'm lost. Come on. Do you think Satan's going to come to you through somebody and say, hey, look, I want Jesus? No. They're going to fight you every step of the way. I was telling somebody, I said, listen, that's what the field is. The church is afraid to reach out to people that's lost. They might hurt my feelings. Come on, church. Well, I would talk to them, but they're lost. Duh. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Ain't we supposed to go look? You know what? When are we going to take some authority over somebody, your children or our grandchildren that come up to us and says, you know what? I don't believe in God. That's when you need to, my old country term, snatch a knot in them. So let me tell you about Jesus. You're going to learn the easy way or the hard way. But see, we're afraid of something we shouldn't be afraid of. For God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. See, when we talk about Jesus says the field is ready for harvest, it means that the souls are ready. And then all he's wanting is somebody to go in the field. You say, you mean I got to go far? Let me tell you something. You don't have to go out your back door. Satan is not just in Asia or in these fathering countries. Hey, he's right here. If you don't believe me, just close your mind up for 30 minutes. He'll, he'll be right there. Amen? See, I know we're all saints, so we don't understand that. That's cool. I get it. But we don't have to go far to go to the field. And listen to this. I, I was listening to a lady that she went to Asia. And, 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 she, and, and, and it, it, it tore your heart all to pieces. Because, you know, we're We're blessed. You don't, you, you say, I'm not blessed. You, oh, oh, yeah. Well, let's take a trip down to Asia where they, they call it the trash dump. And it's where families are being, are living. And let me tell you something. We saw it with our own eyes. Listen, the children at the age of 12, 13, as young kids are being sold into sex trafficking. And they're put in these rooms with tin, and they got chains around them with locks in them. They keep them in where they look out a window. And there's these missions people that's gone in in missions trying to reach these kids and get them out of this stuff where people are selling them. 
See, that's Satan. See, that, that's what God's give us power and authority over. This woman went to this place, and she wasn't afraid because she knew greater is he that was in her than he that was in the world. She went to it, and it tore my heart up to see these little children that were being deceived and destroyed. But she had a heart to go to this harvest. I tell you, church, if we don't open our eyes and realize that Every day of our lives, and it's a fact, you can do it. Thousands of people die all over the world. Thousands of people, and a lot of them's young children. Don't we get it that this is the harvest? That this is, this is what we're supposed to do? This is where we're supposed to reach out? See, we're, see the Bible says it was important... That the, the harvest, he said, look into the field. First was used to look upward. Who's upward? Jesus said, look unto me. He says, and then look outward. See, if you keep your eyes on Jesus and you look out, you can see what, what's going on in this world. But see, one of the problems is that there's a danger of people always looking inward rather than outward. The harvest is right now. See, the inward part says, no, I'm going to wait. No, I, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm thinking about me, 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 me. Listen, church, God will supply you with all you need to people that are in need. We need to look on the fields rather than looking at the faults of others. We can't bring people in church because we, we're the problem probably why some of them's not here. Let's be real. We look at their faults. And, 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 and last time I looked in the mirror, I haven't got no reason. I can't judge nobody. Amen. See, Jesus says, look unto me. And then he said, look outward. See, we need to get our eyes off of the flesh. Come on, church. We need to get our eyes off of the flesh and what we see on the outside and realize that God created that individual. Look, I want you to understand when we, as I told you earlier, let's not look on the faults. Let's don't look at the faults of others because let me tell you, there is no perfect church and there's no perfect pastor. We have a perfect Savior. He says, you need to look into me. See, we can't do a harvest of a messed up world until we get our eyes on Jesus and get our eyes off of the people and their situations. People kill me when they tell me, well, this person's doing this, this person is doing that. I said, but ain't that, isn't that who you're supposed to reach? Suppose we all just had the attitude, well, she's messed up. He's messed up. Man, there ain't no hope for that one. How many of us have made that statement? Come on, don't nobody raise your hand. Boy, they're, they're just doomed. I, I, people tell me, there ain't, there's no hope for that person. Wrong. Wrong. Jesus don't make a bunch of mistakes and say, well, look, I made this pile of people over here. Look, that, you ain't going to reach them. Really? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you who wrote the Bible. Murderers, thieves, adulterers. <laughs> and you know what they were saying about them? They, they can't be reached. God will use who you think can't be reached, but here's the deal. They're sitting there ready to be picked, but guess what we're missing? Does anybody know? Somebody to pick them. Somebody to sow a seed. You might say, well, I, I've talked to them. If you sow the seed, his word won't come back void on that. Listen, <coughs> when you sow a seed, leave that seed to grow. Can I get real for a second? Sometimes we sow a seed and we want to put miracle grow. We want, to, we want to dig it, plant it, and pull it up. We want to make sure it's all done. God says you can't do nothing. Sow the seed. When you sow the word of God, leave it alone. Well, I talked to them, but they didn't respond. Well, it would be wonderful if every time you spoke Jesus, everybody got saved. But that's not the way it works. See, sow a seed with somebody out of love and compassion. Don't go back 30 minutes later and call them, you heathen. You didn't hear a word I said. Because then you just took your seed back and throwed it away. Sow some seeds and walk off. Because see, this message is fall faith, right? Sow a seed means you sow a seed with faith. Come on. I know I've said that a hundred times because I'm trying to get your spirits lifted. Listen. You sowed a seed of faith with Patsy this morning, right? Yes. Well, okay, show God you believe him. Amen. 
Show God that you've planted that seed and you've given it to Him. How do you do that? You put it down, allow God to do what He's going to do. Don't let fear and all this mess of Satan pull up your seed. I'm a firm believer. If you don't believe it, you won't receive it. Why should I tell you to, that God's going to heal you and God's going to deliver you and restore you if I'm sitting here doubting it? Well, I believe we're going to hear that preacher because uh, he, he don't believe. Come on, how many of you are going to sit in here if I sit here and tell you something and then I sit back and say, but I don't believe it? What if I sit here and say, you know, I just preached and y'all the word, but I really don't believe it. I'm going to go and tell you what some of you are going to do. You're going to try to find a way out without me watching. You're going to try to go somewhere where somebody's got some F-A-I-T-H planted in what they're saying. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible, impossible. Everybody say that. Impossible. To please God. Who are we praying to for our loved ones that needs us? God. He says, if you come to me in doubt, oh well, you might as well go to McDonald's and get you a milkshake and sit down and drink it because that's about far as you're going to get. But when you pray, you believe. You pray with faith. Lord, thank you that you've already taken care of this. Thank you, Lord. It's already done because you've already nailed it to the cross. There's nothing we're going through right now. There's nothing I'm ever going to go through that you haven't already brought to the cross. So, Lord, I'm just going to put my faith to work. I don't care what the circumstance looks like. I don't care how dark it looks. My faith is there. What's your faith in? Your faith is in the power of God's Word. The reason why the harvest is being destroyed in the world is because nobody goes out there with a light. Come on, let's get real. Well, you better get saved because your time's running out and you're going to burn in hell if you don't. You go to a, people that witness with the lip dragging the ground, I mean, you might as well stay home. Well, if you don't find Jesus real soon, it's, it's going to be over. I'm going to go on and tell you, you've gone so far now, your only hope is that Jesus will hear you. I don't want you witnessing to me. <laughs> I want somebody to come to me that's got so much faith that it just shines. We went in the hospital Friday, and, I, and I'm going to tell it straight up, and I have a witness I went in, you don't, let me tell you something, I won't. <laughs> I walked in the door, the first lady, I sit down in the administrative part. You go in the hospital for the hospital. First time I, when I sat down, we were talking about Jesus in 15 seconds. Am I right? We were witnessing right there. I, after we got that, she was a smiling and praising the Lord, not because we were in there going, oh, and John went going, he ain't going to make it, he ain't going to make it all. That bless his poor little heart. No, we went in there with faith. Amen. And then when we left that place, she said, now go here and turn here and go here. We walked in the door. I got a witness right here. We walked in the door. These two ladies were sitting behind the, the desk where the, the, the secretaries and the paperwork's done, and where they do the, the test at. And, as soon as I walked in, I, she said, I asked a question too, and I, I don't know how it come up, but I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a pastor. She said, uh, I can tell. They said, we can tell. Let me see how they can tell. <laughs> I'm going to die today. That sure didn't show Jesus. What they saw was I was in there. I started talking about Jesus. Next thing you know, one of them said, Hey, look, did you take this class in, in school? I'm taking this Bible class. We were talking about Jesus. Amen. Look, I, I want to show you something, church. What follows faith? We went from there to the place where they're going to do it. The first lady that walks in there, I even remember her name, Karen. Next thing you know, she's talking about church. We're talking about church. I'm trying to help her reach her children. Now, I'm supposed to be the one having a procedure here. <laughs> and then another one comes in, and daggone it, here we go. Yeah. All of us was talking about Jesus. Amen. And then my wife, you know my wife, 
as soon as we got ready that she had to leave out, she come up and she kissed me and she said, I love you. And I said, I love you. And the nurse that walked in, she said, oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so we started talking about Jesus. What am I saying, church? Listen, faith is contagious. See, whenever you walk in faith, you're walking with Jesus. And let, he set up everything to that I walked out the door of these procedures. And I said, Joan, did you notice something? I said, from the time I walked in the hospital until I walked out, I was surrounded by Jesus. Yeah. See, church, whenever you walk in faith, Jesus surrounds you with people of faith. See, if I'd have walked in there tripping over my lip, complaining and grumbling and griping, see, I wouldn't have felt the presence and nobody else would feel the presence. See, we sowed so many seeds in that hospital, I just... Wanted to sow one more that they didn't have to do all them shots. But I sowed all the seeds I could get while I was there. And listen, those are the seeds that's out. That's what God is saying. Whenever, wherever you are in your circumstances, whether they're good or they're bad, if you walk it out with faith, God's favor will show up in what you're going through. Now, am I wrong? Because I told her, I said, man, I was surrounded by Jesus from the time I walked in that door. Amen. Then I walked that door and some demon tried to mess me up driving. <laughs> That's just the way Satan works. He tries to rob you of your faith. But I, I'm saying that to tell you, Jesus said, see, there's people out there in this world that you take for granted that will, that are saved, but they're listening to you. You need to realize something. People need to see something in you. People need to see a glow in us. People, why? Because you're supposed to have something in you that transforms the way you act and, and the way you talk, right? We're supposed to have something in us that people won't. Now, if you leave out of here and your lips dragging the ground and you go somewhere, nobody ain't going to want you. Go. On. Can you see? I don't know what you got, but I want it. No, they're not going to want what you've got if it don't line up with Jesus. Right. Can you imagine some folks coming to me to talk to me and I'd say, man, you, you just, it's over. There's no hope for you. Are you ready to meet Jesus? I don't know that he'll accept you or not, but we can try. Can you imagine my counseling would be over with? Can you imagine? Don't go to that pastor. I'm going to go on and tell you, if you feel bad before you get there, you're going to feel worse after you leave. But see, what people want is they want to feel and they want to see. The harvest is ready. There's people out there that need Jesus. It's just God's looking for a church that's going to give it to them. And, and if you do it, guess what? All of heaven rejoices at one. Let me tell you about a celebration. Y'all ain't had a party yet. You wait till you, you go, you sow a seed and someone says, well, look, I, I'm not saved. I need Jesus. Or you pray with somebody and they restore or, or, or whatever they're going through. Let me tell you something. There's a party that goes on in here. Anybody ever felt that? Have you ever felt that, that stuff that we call that, that we can't answer? That, that we don't know what it is? Let me tell you something. Whenever you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in you, whenever you do something, you sow a seed, it's something that just kind of, if I had hair, it would tingle. It, it's something that I just can't even explain. You know, whenever you get set free, because I see I owned about 10 million legions of demons as a lost human being. But when I got set free of them demons, I was like, woo Y'all ever felt that way? When you just have something lifted up out of you? See, let me tell you something, church. You haven't lived until you've had a demon come out of you. I'm going to tell you, it makes you feel good. Yeah, it makes, and it gets contagious. Then you want to get a lot of them out. Amen. And see, that's faith. How do these demons leave? By faith. See, whenever we just apply that faith, not focusing on the situations that people's going through, focus on the solution. We need to ask ourselves a question this morning. How, do, how much do we care about lost people? Because guess what? I bet you there's not one person in this room right now or listening that doesn't have at least two or three more in their families 
or they know somebody that's lost. And you know we need to ask ourselves, are we acting out of concern? Are your concerns for those? And, and, and last but not least, this is, the short, this is just where I bring it to an end. Fall is the season to labor the harvest. Church, in verse 36, Jesus said, he said that, it's, that, that the laborers, it's time for the laborers. This is true in the fields. He said, he said in verse 36, listen, he said, and he that reapeth receiveth wages. Do you know what wages is? Reward. I love a reward. Anybody like rewards? Well, I'm going to tell you, how many of you want to get to heaven and start explaining why you got no rewards? Amen. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. He says, reward. Right. Receive wages. Hey, look, do you, do you know when we tell people about Jesus, I just changed my mansion to a little gold or color. I don't got rough floors. I got hardwood floors. I'm just, par I'm just paraphrasing. I'm just telling you straight up. Here's the deal. Whenever you sow seeds, all of heaven is keeping account. He says, you, you gain. Hey, look, when I get to heaven, I want, he, I want him to say, wow, man, you've done a good job. You told people about Jesus. See, that, how many of us want to get to heaven and have a harvest? Amen. I don't want one acre. You hear me? I want to be the biggest farmer there ever was. I want to have so many fields up yonder, boy. I'm like, yes, Lord, it's me. Amen. Instead of saying, yes, me, Lord. Can I please come in? See, you got to understand something. See, there's, a, there's, a, there's wages for those. Look, you want a church to be blessed? You want to see churches quit being empty? Quit letting the preacher be the only one that tells people about Jesus. You, you, you want to see a blessing in your finances, a blessing in your home, a blessing in your marriage, a blessing in your children. You want to see a blessing. You let God see you doing what he put you here to do. You let God see you reaching out and reaping a harvest and telling people about Jesus. Well, my child, man, he don't like Jesus. Slap a knot in him and tell him about Jesus anyway. Come on. I can see me telling my mama, no. I ain't going to do it. That was probably the last words I'd have spoken until I got my teeth fixed. Let me tell you something. Fear of the Lord. And, 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 and that's what we need to do. Quit being afraid that you're going to offend somebody. I, I'm going to close this down by telling you. Quit being afraid that you're going to offend people with Jesus. Give me a break. I don't want to offend them. They won't be my friend anymore. Well, I got news for you. They won't be your friend in hell. I love you, but there's no buts with it. You better tell them about Jesus. And the harvest about the laborers, this is true in the area of soul winning. See, methods of harvesting have changed, but we have to adapt. I know some people say, you mean we got to change the way we witness? Well, you know, Paul said it. Let me tell you what Paul said in closing. 1 Corinthians 9, 22. Let me tell you what he said. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. So that Bible tells us that we got to kind of, you got to regroup. Let me tell you something growing up. Yeah, we had, we had a little dope running around as a teenager. Of course, we, did, we didn't know it from the tobacco patch. We would roll up tobacco patch leaves. That would definitely get you high and knock you out to start with. If anybody ever smoked one of them things, we, we used to see granddaddy smoke up them, having them cigars. So we'd get some tobacco out of the field that had been cured. <laughs> and like that rascal. I'm going to tell you, one inhalement of that bad boy. And <laughs> uh, uh, you turn about three shades of white. And all of a sudden, you're going, whoop, whoop, and you're sick as a dog. But back then, we didn't have meth crystal meth heroin we didn't have microdot acid we didn't have all this mess but so what do you do paul says adapt adapt open your mind up to saying hey this is the same demon this is satan's same attack he's just using different methods and paul says we need to use different methods we need to not be afraid of what satan is doing realize it's the same enemy just different tactics We've already been given the power and authority in the word of God. No matter what Satan comes up with. No matter what drug. No matter what he comes up with. We've already been given the victory through his word. Church, 
You know, Jesus told us in verse 36 in John 4, he said, you know, about the rewards for us. But we need to ask ourselves a question this morning. We need to really focus on this one question because there's not one single soul in here that doesn't know somebody that's lost and somebody that's running from the Lord. Quit running behind them with a ball bat. Quit running behind them trying to beat them into submission. Listen. The problem with Christianity nowadays is about what we want people to do. God don't need your help. He just needs you to sow what he's already given you. And we need to pray for those. We need to, look, claim the word of God over people. We need to, we need, we need to do this. And, and, and on Wednesday nights, we're, we're teaching people about controlling your mind for Christ. Christ controlled mind. I, I'm teaching people how to, to operate in that power and authority. And see, listen, people out there need to hear the word of God. But if you don't prove me wrong as I close, let me tell you something. Go out and ask half the people what they learned in church today. Praise and worship was awesome. I love Lacey. She just got it going. Preacher, he preached about God. I know that for sure. I hope he did anyway. You got nothing. See, church, I'm telling you. See, God has already equipped us to win. And God's already got the field ready. What did he do, Jonah? Jonah, run. God said, I got this city ready, Jonah. I, I'm just trying to get you there. Yeah. I don't want to go. I don't even like these people. They're heathens. They're lost. I don't want to mess with these heathens. I'm a Christian. What's wrong with you, God? I don't want to mess with them. God says, that's, that's okay. You become fish bait until I get your attitude you straightened up. And when he finally spit him out, the boy went mad. He even went mad. I got to go in this town. Tell these people about Jesus. I don't even like them. He even went in with an attitude, but God still used this messed yeah. up man yeah. to save a whole town. Yeah. <coughs> See, God just wants some people that'll just go. Some of you might not even want to go. He'll still use you. Can you imagine what he would do, guys, if we just were, I'm ready. And smile doing it. Man, can you imagine the impact we will make on this world if we just finally realize that God's got us where he wants us. It's up to us to, to reap because it's ready. Now I want to open up this altar. And, and here's what I want to do as they go up. Yeah, go ahead, please. You want to make God proud? You got to do it this way. It's great that we're saved. I'm glad you're saved. But what good is it doing you if you're not sharing it? He'll take it away from you and give it to somebody that's willing to use it. Does anybody want their salvation removed from them? No. We all want Jesus, but we've got to share it. I want to ask you this question. How important is the harvest to each and every one of us? The harvest is our children. The harvest is our grandchildren. See, they're not, we know them. We love them. But how important is our harvest? We got, we got families out there that are raising our children, some of our grandchildren, that no, God's not a good thing. <laughs> That's part of the, the harvest. I want you to look around as I open this altar. What do we see more than we see people? Empty chairs. Yeah. Do you know what? You don't even have to go within a 10 mile radius and find enough lost people to fill these chairs. <coughs> if we've ever needed to pray for our families and our nation, now's the time to pray. And, and look, send your prayers of faith. Come up to this altar and say, Lord, I'm just extending my faith to, to Patsy in that hospital right now. Lord, I'm just expecting a miracle of healing. I, I, I just, I'm expecting Almighty God to move upon her circumstance, but also upon every circumstance in this room. Church, let's show God that we are ready for the harvest. Let's, let's show God. This altar's open, church.